Okay, well, here we go. Nice and easy this way. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to use a chisel. Sounds good to me. Why not? Screwdriver, whatever. See, it only takes the wood off that you sat there and cut down for. You ain't gonna hurt nothing else. You can see where I had my other curves here. Now I brought it up to an angle here. All this is going to disappear anyway when we start planing it. Yeah, use a chisel. Use a hammer and chisel. Sounds good. Actually, I should be using a chisel this way. Show it the right way. Okay, that's pretty good. Got one spot here I can knock off. This is where I changed my angle. Pretty easy. It's a whole lot easier trying to carve it all off and wondering where you're at. These lines, when you get down to these lines right here, you can see exactly where you need to be. The only thing I got left to do is plane off the top of these to get down to my level. Right here, I did get this edge to the line where I want it. And that's the important part. So, what? Well, I get all this down. to hit the help. I make my kerf kind of close together. That way that I don't have to really worry about the wood grain digging down deeper into the next level. Now as you see here I've only kerfed down so far up here. But like I said it makes it so much easier for me to kerf down to here not having to wonder where this line and edge is up here. This follows right up the line. This is all the wood that needs to be gone. Disappears so easy. And then we do the fine stuff later. Now if you notice my edges right here, I went right around that circle by cut this way down to here and I cut down this way. This is what makes it easy. It's a one-handed job. When you... There, now all I have to do All I have to do now is take this edge right here and kerf down to this line till I get down to here and all this other stuff will knock out. Okay. Or you can just go like this. important to hit the chips away from you. And by all means, use a chisel. <laughs> okay. Now you can see just how much easier it is to tell if you're up to this line right here and down the other one. All I have to do is watch this line down here where my thumb is. Looking at the prop, I uh, carved the top surface off. I went ahead and finished the kerfing and busted all those pieces out. Then, looking down the edge for the high spots, I've taken my grinder and done all the way down. I took it like this, crossed here. If you press hard, the wood gets hot and does a lot of burning. You go lightly and take all the rest of it out. 
here's where I curved a little bit too far in spots, but I'm not going to take that out. I don't really think the wind's going to mind. Uh, sorry, it's a little late out here, and I got a thunderstorm trying to roll in. You can see the continuous twist of the blades. Looking down the blades, you can see straight across. You see, and what I did, just so you'll know, I took the edge of the grinder flat. Well, kind of hard holding the camera. Took the edge of the grinder kind of flat until I came down to that edge and put that line perfect. Then I did the same on this side, all the way down leaving my line and then looking down it you can see where it gets completely flat on my angle and I've come and ground out the whole middle it wasn't much to grind because like at this spot you can see this is where I went down a little too far with the kerfing but as you come across those lines just start to disappear and then you know you're done you just keep on moving down then when you're done you uh, say this is flat coming up at an angle a little bit like this puts kind of a flat edge on you and you can lean it this way and come across this way and go back and forth like this and it takes all your high spots out and smooths it out the next thing you want to do when you get both sides done is grab it right on the line I don't know if it's gonna and if it balances it it does pretty good if not if it goes on this like this and take some out of the middle middle of uh, like right down in here the farther you the more you take off on the end the faster it's going to change your balance taking a lot out in here will equal just a little taking it out out here I think I'll show you the end if this is the right end no let's show you the other end where I actually drew the venturi curve there we are this is the flat side and you can see the line of the curve the way this is going to go and from this point up here down to this down here is three degrees that'll give you a 4.5 tip speed ratio all I have to do and what these lines here for I'll take from here to this line right here and then I'm going to then I'm going to lay it at another angle and take another little line off and I'll take some more of this line off till it meets, meets here and I'll have my curve perfect but I'll do it the same all the way down and that's going to finish out this one sorry I didn't get to show everybody as much as I wanted to now you see all these lines here oops, fixing the rain I'm going to take from this line here all the way to the flat edge right here I'm not going to sharpen this yet I will when I'm done but all of this wood from here to here will disappear all the way to here and I'm going to round just a little bit there and the same thing that I'm doing over here on these lines I'll wind up doing over here and this will give this a little bit more twist and pitch and see how thin this is this is very thin and this is light wood and it's strong this is, I'm going to weigh this blade before I go ahead and finish it out. I want people to know just how light these are. This feels like, like a handful of chopsticks almost. <laughs> it is so light. And it's going to cut the air so easy. There's not going to be very much, uh, there's not going to be very much drag at all on this, which is going to help it, it's going to help it uh, spin very fast. 